Hello everybody and welcome back to another an another another oh another another Mech Warrior Mech online, online variant video. Today we're looking at the Stone Rhino online. 2 or the Weapon SR2. Online. This is a significant modification of the base uh, Stone Rhino. Actually, it was made by Clan Goliath Scorpion when they decided to have their own crack at making their own variant of this uh, rather uh, iconic Clan Assault Battle Mech. It's a pair of heavy large lasers. In one in each arm, has a pair of Gauss rifles mounted on the top of the mech, and it has a quadruple set of heavy medium lasers. Now, normally on the tabletop uh, and in the universe, it has two rear firing heavy mediums. It also has a head mounted, or I think it's a head mounted uh, heavy small, or a pair of heavy smalls, uh, and it's also got an AMS system and jump jets and 19 tons of armor. By default, it comes with uh, 16 double heatsink, so. It actually struggles to keep this thing cool. Uh, but in MW, obviously, the rear firing, any rear firing weapon gets uh, moved to the front. The mech is also supposed to have anti personnel pods on the legs, one on each. But in MW, those don't exist because you don't need them. So I think they have just been swapped out, maybe for extra AMS ammo or a little bit more armor on the legs. I can't, rem I can't really tell. It's Target largely uh, negligible. In the universe, as I said, it was pretty much just Clang Life Scorpion's attempt at making their own variant of the mech that was uh, making use of the most recent technologies available to them. In this case, it was the heavy laser technology, which was a clan specific design. Uh, in effect, this made for quite a deadly up close fighter. Heavy large lasers don't have as much range, but they certainly do have the damage potential up there. And it's got pretty good range combat abilities overall. Uh, twin Gauss Rifles is nothing to sniff at, but virtually no heat, and you're doing a nice 30 point alpha, and then you've got all those lasers when you get into the brawling range, and this mech certainly has the armor to keep fighting. Um, yeah, overall, not a bad mech, quite deadly. In MWO, obviously, this means it's a mech that's got a hell of a lot of energy hard points available to it, uh, capable of being able to probably create all kinds of builds now that you can do a lot of damage very quickly, probably swap a lot of these heavy lasers out for just standard clan equivalents, maybe a bunch of pulse lasers, uh, whatever you want to do. It does obviously suffer from some of the LSAS situations, but because some of the weapons are mounted in the side torsos, you do have a little bit of height compared to the arm mounted weapons. Obviously, the big selling point of this one is the very, very high mounted Gauss rifles which means you do have the options for having very high mounted ballistics, which means you don't have to poke as much of the mech out to get those shots, as you can see that I was just doing to that Atlas pilot. Uh, this was also an interesting round, I'm not quite sure what happened with this one. Uh, as you can see, our team is already down several mechs at this point. I thought, well, you know, I don't think I'm going to get... I don't think that this one will be a win, but I certainly think I'll be able to get enough, you know, damage in there to, to at least uh, do something that, uh, you know, I can yak on at you like I am now long enough. Uh, the match is very, very different to what I expected it to be. Um, the Stone Rhinos and MWO are remarkably tanky as well. They do have the ability to absorb a lot of impact. Um, I, I think it, it's one a case of one of those mechs that the hitboxes are a little bit... So, uh, I think they, they feel a bit kind of squished, they're very close together, which means it, it's difficult sometimes just to hit one specific part easily at a sort of long to medium range, so short range obviously becomes less of an issue, but it does mean that you're capable of being able to kind of spread damage out, which is good because obviously as a 100 tonner, it doesn't move that quick, it's a machine that definitely relies on being surrounded by enough friendlies that it can keep pumping out damage quickly enough. Uh, that it can, acquired. you know, support in a kind of, uh, in like a rolling ball of death, you know, the, the usual, the death ball of Mech Warrior Online, where if you get enough of the team together, you can just stomp forward and just keep firing and just, you know, focus one target at a time. Uh, now you get to see why those uh, heat sinks aren't enough, because obviously this this does have skills, by the way, but uh, obviously uh, heavy medium lasers and heavy large lasers, I, I got a little carried away trying to get this guy, and I, I was just cycles firing the heavy mediums, and as you can see, that just pushes the heat level all the way up there. I was very lucky that the other guy who was backing up didn't realise I was there. Just got that kill. And that the Marauder 2 was panicking the same as I was. And uh, you know, he also overheated because I blew up his side torso, so that caused him to shut down. But uh, yeah, he's uh, remarkably tanky and he did not want to get killed. And uh, yeah, I had overshot the wall. I, I was I was all, all fingers and thumbs at that point, but managed to get him. Acquired. 
And weirdly enough, then everything's turned around for the team. I don't know what's happening. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, there it is. Uh, it, was, it was a weird one. It was a very strange, uh, a strange match. It just kind of went the other way for some reason. I also like the fact that on my screen, that Warhammer, I think it just died standing up. Um, but yeah, uh, would I recommend it? Yeah, actually, I, th I think this is quite a good variant of the Stone Rhino. It's not like it's a bad mech to begin with. Um, but yeah, this one is particularly fun. Uh, I, I did enjoy it. The, the couple of rounds I dropped uh, for the recording, a uh, little bit of tinkering. You know, you get put 91 skill points on it, it just gets better. And uh, I'm sure with some custom builds, you could probably make something really, really good. And for anybody who isn't aware, uh, <laughs> as one rather amusing commenter uh, made a while ago, no, I'm not very good. I wouldn't recommend uh, ever running stock builds in M2. The game is not, at this point, is not built around making stock builds a viable thing. If you've got your own ideas for it, run them in that, because stock builds are just not the way to go about it. Stock builds are for the... You know the the older guys who, who only know this battle tech thing, and they're they're not they're not like one of the new cool kids who uh, who just like change all the mechs off the spot. Target so destroyed. yeah, I'm not I'm not recommended running this thing as is the whole way through. Just just so that person who's sniffing Jankum doesn't go fucking crazy uh, in a, with a long diatribe comment. But uh, there we go. Um, a, a very rare but good round for me on that one uh, hell of a lot of sea bills and uh, yeah uh, I think I got top match score but uh, there we go so thanks for listening everybody or watching and I'll catch you all next time bye bye <laughs>